I worked in a grocery store and they would put the groceries on there and I would walk around the city to deliver them. Um, but in doing that, I was able to observe everything in the cities and so on. And one day, I passed a shop, sports shop, and I saw there some magazines. And in the magazine, I would notice that the weightlifters were strong and husky. And I was being, where I lived, they picked on me. I was big and they picked on me. So that was it. I was skinny and I used to go walk in the streets and in French Canada, they didn't like Jewish people. But they picked on us, uh, but they had to fight back. And I saw the barbells there, no dumbbells, barbells. So I went to all the stores in, Mon in Montreal because nobody knew about these things in Canada. And I went to ask them if they sell barbells here. Barbells, we don't got barbells here. And I asked them, well, do you have dumbbells here? Yeah, we got a bunch of dumbbells here working for us. We'll sell them for you. Well, that's the way they were, they were because they never heard of them. Right. Who's going to sell us dumbbells? Who's going to sell a barbell? They never did. Nobody knew about it. But luckily, there was a blacksmith. I might as well go there and see if they could make me a barbell set because they had the hammers and the everything. So one day they say, we don't make that stuff. Boy, they say, if you go there, they'll be happy to give it to you free to take it out of there. And we went down to the stockyard and I saw all the junk, and I did a solid one piece of equipment to, I took home with me. I was glad to get rid of it. And then I began to training at home. When the war began, I couldn't compete in weightlifting anymore because they took everybody away into the army. As long as you were not in communication, they left you alone. So they put the, most of them in the army. So all the weight lifters were in the army. And I couldn't weight lift, but I liked lifting heavy weights. That's why we did it do it in the gym. You know, we'll do this, do this, different things. Yeah. And by doing different things, I began to get different things, you know, like the picked up weight, like the push away. Yeah. So because of that, I enjoyed building my body. I had no money, I had eight dollars to my name. So I figured I was gonna put out a magazine. As everybody's asking me, see when I began lifting the weight, everybody said, how do you get strong like that? How do you get so big? So nobody picked on me. Right. And everybody wanted to be, they said, hey Tarzan, before they used to pick on me, but after a year or so, they used to call me Tarzan. It was in a build up. Well, it got started because they, they after a period of maybe for about eight, nine years, you know, with the little magazines I had, people began to read it and lifted weights, and they wanted to compete. So these guys had nothing to do, and they would say, Joe, you know, everybody has it, every sport has it, why don't we have it? I said, okay, we'll put, put, we'll put, put a, put a, a contest. A competition together for you. Yeah. After five or six years in publishing the magazine, that became a big success. Right. And people all over the world wanted the copies of the magazine. Right. So when my brother came out of the army, I asked him to become an ambassador for our sport. And he did. And he was a great ambassador. People loved him. He went all over the world. There was no competition. Oh. When he came with pictures and so forth, and he showed it to the president, you know, all over the, the country, wherever he went, how bodybuilding is a great sport. And they were very fascinated too. Not only we were fascinated, but they were fascinated. You know, if you go to Poland, or you go to Greece, 
Or if you go when, uh, wherever you went, they instinctively knew that you had to be stronger. Right. Let's say you wanted to be a great football player. Right. You can't be a football player being skinny. Right. You're not tough. Tough knock you over. That's right. So they wanted to be tough. The real poor. There was the depression. But I ate food, but the point is that when I ate my food, I made sure that it was good food. Right. And I did, it, it, and I had a garage. I built a garage in my home, and that was my gym. I worked there. Then eventually, uh, you know, when I began lifting in the, in the garage there, then later on, some years later, the, the the barbells were being sold in the United States. And I bought some of them. And then I began copying them and putting out our own magazine, Modern Big Horn. I used to train at my home. There was no gym uh, for bodybuilding and so forth. But one day, somebody rang the bell at my home and they said, does Joe Weeder live here? I look, I am Joe Weeder. <laughs> you are Joe Weeder, the left wing race? He says, yeah, could you show me how you do it? There was a couple of guys. They were looking all over the city to get members for the club. You know, they had no advertising, no magazines or do anything. So they used to go around to do it, uh, to help the clubs get members. So they came to my place and I showed them how strong I was. They said, wow, you're really powerful. Right. Would you like to be a weightlifter? Weightlifter, okay. They opened the doors and I saw the gym. All the guys were training, lifting heavy weights and helping, giving advice to one another, supporting them. I said to myself, boy, these are the guys I like. They support each other, they help each other. And that's when I became involved with that. If you don't lift weights, you're gonna die. For instance, I take a ch check, uh, you know, every year. With all part, for all parts of my body. And when I go to the doctors, they all say, my God, you've got bones for a man of 20 years younger than you. I have powerful bones. And when you weight lift, your whole body gets strong. It's not only muscular, but strong. You know, it got force in the body that has to eat and do things. If you were an athlete right. lifting weights, they'll kick you off the team because they figure you might become muscle bound. They say weight training will make you muscle bound. Now, if you lift weights, they put you in the team. I love bodybuilding. Not only that, I almost felt like a pope yeah. with weightlifting. I always watched the bodybuilders. In fact, until 1975, 76, I wanted them to stop taking drugs. You know how old I am? I'm almost 90. Before the medical profession said, don't lift any weight, nothing, you'll rupture yourself. You break your bones, you're so crazy. <laughs> now, they tell you to exercise. And if they say if you exercise all the time, you'll live at least 20 years longer. Well, I'm happy because I love bodybuilding. I loved all the bodybuilders ever since I was a kid. They're my favorite people. When I was bodybuilding, I knew what bodybuilding would do for people. So they, they say, well, Bodybuilding a bunch of egomaniacs. They look in the mirror and flex their muscles because they want to show off. That's right. That's they didn't know right. they were so showing off. They were looking for flaws in their body sure. to get better, but they didn't know about it. Right. Bodybuilding is the greatest thing in the world. It makes you strong. You'll see if you exercise, you'll be better when you're 40, 45. Every bodybuilder to me is a great friend, and I, and I consider them a friend and a pal. When I'm with bodybuilders, I'm always happy.